Let's go into recording. Stop recording right now. Hi, everybody. We're recording. This is the stuff that you don't see before we go on. So welcome, everybody. I am Jody Harris. I am the president of the Las Vegas Wedding Chamber of Commerce, and I'm so excited that you took this time to be here with us. We have a great webinar coming on in just a few minutes, and I hope uh, you guys get a lot out of it. One of the nice things about the Las Vegas Wedding Chamber of Commerce, that is unlike other associations here in Las Vegas, we are opening up our phone calls and our webinars to everybody. Everybody is welcome. Trolls are not welcome, but everybody else is. So if you weren't, if you tried to get on this call and you were turned down, you might be a troll. You might be a troll. Not a redneck, but you might be a troll. So uh, anyway, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, Jody Harris, your president. I'm with Sight and Sound Events. That's my full-time job when I'm not doing presidential stuff here for the Wedding Chamber. I have an amazing board, and I hope you take the opportunity to meet every, each and every one of them. Uh, Jason Whaley, he's, he's just amazing. He's from Smash Booth. He's your vice president. He's soon to be president. He's amazing, so make sure you guys follow him. Iris, Iris D Photography, what can I say? Iris, uh, she's also amazing. She's really put a lot of heart and soul into this and she's trying to plan her first event. So uh, once this is all over, this virus, um, Iris is going to rock a great party for each and every one of you. And of course, the woman that keeps us all organized and together and she's amazing as well, Sarah. Sarah Savinelli from The Bootlegger, um, our treasurer. She watches every penny, every dime. She questions everything. She's just awesome. Um, so yes, she's our rock star. And of course, our secretary, Stephanie Rodriguez, Hilton Garden Inn, um, brand new on the board, passionate, creative, um, been in the industry for a long time. She brings a lot to the table. And uh, we're currently looking for a membership chair. So if any of you watching this video, watching me right now, would like to step up and be on the board membership, we need help. We need help in our membership side. So please uh, reach out to me, Jody, uh, Jody at Sight and Sound. Y'all know how to get me. President at Las Vegas Wedding Chamber dot Vegas. You can find me there. Um, we hired a publicist, guys, which is real exciting. Uh, PR Plus is going to be doing all our publicity. You might have seen some of the stuff that's come out, even USA Today. USA Today. Today. Uh, we had an article in there. So um, we, got, we got great energy. And guess what? The dues is 100 bucks. $100? Come on. That's, you know, I know we're all out of work. We haven't gotten any gigs. I get it. I know. You heard of Two Broke Girls? Well, that's me. I'm one half of the Two Broke Girls team. Uh, my husband and I, we should be the Two Broke couple. I don't know, two broke people, but we all are. We're all experiencing it. So I don't want to make a joke of it, make light of it, but it's great value. Great stuff here at the Las Vegas Wedding Chamber of Commerce. So I hope you please take advantage and uh, get involved. So right now I am in charge. It's my party. I'm in charge right now and uh, just waiting for some people to hop on. That's why I'm talking to you all. So um, hang out with me and um, People should be popping in here. Our, our meeting starts at five. I just didn't want to stop the recording button, but wanted to have a heart to heart talk with some of you and get involved. You know, people get involved. That's how, you know, things rock and roll here. You got to get involved, get involved in an association, get involved. That's how you get business, especially now. Social media, get involved, kiss hands, kiss hands, shake hands, kiss babies. Um, yeah. You know, get out there and uh, get. You got to get out. You got to get out. You can't live in fear. You got to get out and meet people. And uh, you know, life goes on. You know, we can't just you just can't live in fear. And I, I understand for some of you, it's it's really difficult. I get it. Trust me. I know. Don't send me hate mail. Um, but yeah. So, just waiting for the rest of the team to come on. And did you know you could change your screen name? By the way, there you go. You could change your screen name in Zoom. All you have to do is right click on your old screen name and screen change your screen name. 
and you can put your Instagram handle like I did and your company website and yeah, it's all good. So yeah, we're just waiting for a few people to pop in to my party and I'll cry if I want to, but I hope everybody's doing well. Oops, I need a drink. I'm about to cough. Turn your heads, everybody. <coughs> That's why you need to wear a mask. Ah, that's good. You having fun watching this? By the way, you guys look amazing. You really do. You look good. I hope you put on clean clothes today. How many people are excited that we've got uh, nail salons are open? I know I am. You can get your nails done, your hair done. Just don't take advantage. We don't want this to end. Yep, so I'm just waiting for people to come in. Wow, we're a little slow today. <laughs> of course, I'm taping this great message. I'm waiting for people to come in, participants. Just me. You have to look at me. This is the time I really wish, wait, I can do this. This is the time I really wish I had, like, um, like, so I got the 10 minute warning here. I wish I had like a um, background music, but I do because I can do that. <clears throat> I don't know why I have a tickle in my throat, guys. I'm so sorry. It's not the virus. <clears throat> it's a tickle. Oh, we have one guest waiting. How amazing is this? Let's go. Let's see who our first person is. Okie dokie. Admit. Bam. What's up? Bum, bum, bum. Hey, Kelly. Do, 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 do. Hopefully you can hear me. Maybe I have him on mute. Bum, 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 bum. Unmute. Hey, Kelly, can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Cool. We're the only two here right now. Like, what the hell? Like, where is everybody? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, it said 530, but it said like some kind of. Uh, oh, yeah. At beforehand. Yeah. Five o'clock, we all get together and just kind of shoot the shit. And then um, 530, our speaker will come on. So, um, yeah, people should be popping on any minute. So we'll get ready. How are you today? I'm okay, just uh, fighting the battles. I know, right? Did you get that email I sent you from Lynn about like calling your council person or whatever it was, the, the commissioner? Did you see that? Uh, yeah, I did about Tony's question. I think so. Yeah, about like how many people and all that stuff. Because Lynn said she couldn't advise you because that's not her, I guess, her job. Right. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're all looking for some kind of clarity when it comes down to, you know, the amount of people that you can have, because it says, you know, 10, no groups, you know, public gatherings more than 10, but we're not a public gathering. Right, exactly, exactly. So, yeah. There's I think just so much gray area. I think we're all, I mean, I know my brother and I are, are uh, on, the, on the same page and just opening as of June. Yeah. And... Yeah. And, you know, under, I mean, my personal belief, because I see what's going on everywhere, sure. is that we will, you know, we're going to be taking better care of our customers than any restaurant. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. with social distancing and, and our cleaning techniques. And, you know, it's all, it's all in place to do it the right way. Sure. And, uh, you, you know, know, I just don't know what else to do, you know? Yeah, no, you know what I'm looking for? And I don't know, maybe tomorrow in our call with all the vendors, we can talk about, about this. But how does your vendors, like your DJs, your photographers, your videographers, how do we become um, certified that, you know, that we are practicing, that, that we have a document or something that says we are a certified uh, COVID vendor? You know what I'm saying? Like, that we're going to take the proper steps and protocol, you know, I would think that would be a, uh, a, like a certification or something, you know, cause it could help business. It could help like 
some of the small businesses like mine. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know of any place that, uh, you know, that's offering COVID certifications. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, there's no contact with, I mean, except with photographers that, uh, you know, when they're posing a bride and, you know, uh, you know, putting them in place for a shot where there would be contact. So as long as we avoid that and he just has to verbally tell them, hey, get a little closer, look at me, mm -hmm. smile. Sure. You know, and do all the proper things. And, and he's going to be wearing a mask too. Right. Uh, so facial coverings for the photographer, facial coverings for all the staff. I agree. What, and, what about, uh, what about the microphone situation though? When like, you know, you know, back in the day, sometimes DJs only had one or maybe two microphones. Like what are we, I know what I was, I would do. Cause right before the outbreak hit, I worked a wedding in Mount Charleston right before. So that Saturday night before the governor closed this, what, on Wednesday, we were sanitizing everything and nobody was allowed to use my mic. Nobody. I had a second mic on a mic stand. We sanitized it. Um, I think that's going to have to be the new norm for speeches and stuff like that. Absolutely. And I think we're uh, going to limit the speeches to, to just the best man's toast or... Right. If there, if there is a maid of honor toast or maybe a parent toast or something like that, we do have an additional microphone for that as well. But you well, can't, obviously you won't be able to share that microphone, I guess, unless you're in the same household, which the DJ would have to learn that ahead of time. Right. Or we'd have to, un, un, you know what we can do too, I was thinking about this, Kelly, is that we could probably spread out the toast. So like if the couple was really that adamant about doing a toast, like, okay, mom and dad will do the official welcome toast. And then, you know, and that gives you time to clean that microphone, sanitize it so that when it's time for the best man toast, he can take the microphone, you know, maybe something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. You know, do like breaks, you know, first, you know, cocktail hour, welcome, you know, here's Kelly and Tony, you know, welcome. And then, you know, first course and then salad, you know, just because it gives the DJ time to clean that microphone, you know, wipe it down with something. Yeah. Or, you know, with our DJs, you know, they have, they have two microphones for toast and then one microphone for the DJ himself. So one could do a toast. And then he could have a different microphone for a second toast. I mean, very rarely are we going to get more than two toasts anyways. But right. for that right. third toast, while the second toast is going on, he could be cleaning that first mic. Yep. And you know just kind of keep it, keep it rotating around. You know what's nice, Kelly? This is going to be great. Now we don't have to pass the mic around at a wedding. Oh, my God. I hated that. <laughs> Do an open mic. Oh, Jeez. my God. It took forever. <laughs> <laughs> you I should never do open mic. <laughs> oh, my yeah, God. It's, it's, it's kind of outlawed now. Oh, my God. Yeah, now it's done. Iris is here, our event chair. And Vicki, our speaker, is here. So she's uh, popped in a little early to say hi. Yeah, I just hi. wanted to hi, Vicky. hang out. Hi, Kelly. <laughs> I don't know why my camera's not working. Uh, are you on your laptop? I am. And does your cam does your laptop have a camera? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that would it should be right up in the middle on the like in the middle there like when you open your screen there's like a little circle. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I have uh, I have audio only. Okay, because down at the bottom. There are, there's this like little microphone that says mute and then there's a, a camera that says stop video and there's all kinds of stuff. That option might not pop up if your device doesn't have a camera. <laughs> really? Yeah. Zoom wouldn't, wouldn't recognize it? If it doesn't have one, I don't know that it would give you that option. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Well, let we're me, here. Let me tinker. <laughs> you got it. We're here early. Iris, what's going on? I can't hear her. She's muted. Iris, let's see. I, I don't think she's muted. I think she's oh. muted. Oh, oh, sorry. I muted myself. Sorry. <laughs> Look on your bottom left. There's a stop start video button. I'm already recording. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. That's for you. That's for your, um. Kelly, for Kelly? Yeah, for Kelly. Kelly, do you see that? Um, next to mute, unmute. Oh. Hey. 
There he is. Whoa. Oh, you're kind of blurry. Picture. Is he blurry or did I have too much to drink? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can fix this here. Hold on. That's Bear still better me. than a black box, you know. So. Yeah. Um, I have somebody just privately texted me going, what's the code? How do I get into this meeting tonight? I'm like, are you kidding me? I just uh, checked my links and they're good. Yeah, I didn't need a password or anything. The link, I just you know it from the Facebook look at event. this new email. You know this new email that was sent out today? Uh-huh. Maybe that one, um, no, that should... I used the one that was pasted into the Facebook event. And yeah, yeah, I've checked all these links. Yeah, they're, they're all sending me in. So um, I think that they're working. Yeah, I went to waiting room, but I didn't need a password. So. One time we posted an old, like a link to an old meeting. So, so they were going to the wrong meeting, but um, I just checked all my links. I did that for a Toastmasters event recently. We were having a contest and we had seven guest judges and I emailed all of the judges one email and sent them the wrong link. So we couldn't start the contest because we didn't have any judges and I had to go and re-email them and they were like texting me going, the link's not working. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I just literally, I don't even know what I sent them. I copied it off from something else on my calendar and sent them the wrong one. It was terrible. Are they, what, that person, where were they trying to join us from? Uh, she was just somebody I know on Facebook and I just sent it to her. So she just, wow. she's a Facebook friend. It wasn't letting me through Facebook. She says it wasn't letting oh, you me look Hmm. Really? That's what she said. Linda, description, there's a description. If she reads the details, there's the link right there. Well, she's going to pop in in a second. So we'll ask her. Her name is uh, Shoshana. Shoshana. So she'll pop in here in a minute. I just told her to check her email and I have nobody in the waiting room right now. So, um, that's strange. yeah, usually by five, that's what I was saying. Usually like five minutes early and it's no Jason, no Sarah. I'm surprised. But they would have probably, uh, sent you a text or something. Would you, would you think? Yeah, I would think so. Kelly got in. He got in no problem. I feel like the biggest challenge lately is keeping track of what day and what time it is because they just sort of start to feel a lot the same and don't they well you know what happened that that email that was sent out today for tomorrow's event when i first got it and i just like scanned the title really quick the last word is tomorrow but it's talking about the other meeting she's got the two meetings in one email and it says zoom uh into color tonight and a wedding reception tomorrow re reopening tomorrow and when i when i just glanced at it all i saw was the zoom and tomorrow and i was almost about to resend this email and then i i looked at it closer and it said it said you know the two events one is tonight and one is tomorrow but i think it might have confused people uh today oh, you ruin your meeting <laughs> <laughs> my <No>. fault <laughs> Well, I don't care if there's three or 30 or 300. And if you guys are videoing or recording it, you know, and able to send it to your other members who, who don't come, I mean, they'll miss out on any potential Q and A, but. Um, yeah, know. it's good we're recording it. Cause um, people do like to see it after. I did make a great message. Oh, we got two people waiting in the room here. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Four people wait, no, two people, admit all. There we go. We got people popping in. And Hi, everybody. I think Sarah just sent me a message. So let me just check my, uh, she just texted me, I think. I will check. So what is everybody um, drinking and uh, what is their favorite color? Are you wearing your favorite color? Um, I, I didn't have margarita stuff, so I didn't want to waste, um, I have some open bottles of wine. So I, I'm like, well, I don't want to waste those. So I'm drinking some red wine and I'm wearing purple. It's a, like a dusty, dusty lavender. Nice. Anybody else? Um, Matt, what are you drinking? Oh, you're on mute, by the way. I'm drinking fat tire. 
A uh, beer, yeah? Yes, beer. Nice. Is your favorite color black? N no. <laughs> but I'm wearing a Journey t-shirt. That's my hey. favorite brand. There you Don't go. Stop That's good. Definitely one of my favorites, too. Oh, cool. All right. I got a Tony over there. I saw her pop her photo pop up for a second. Hi, I am without a camera, so I'm just um, signed in and uh, here on my phone as well. And tell us who you are and what you do. And what you're drinking. <laughs> what you're drinking. And what you're drinking, since we can't see <laughs> your favorite color. It's gotta be pretty good. <laughs> So I'm Tony Jackson. I own the Firelight Barn Dinner Theater in oh, Henderson. Yeah. I've heard and, of you. Uh, I've heard of you. Yeah. Good. That's a good thing. Yeah. So we're ho we're hoping to open up uh, real soon, and we're already with the new show and uh, new stage and everything. So we're excited. Um, my favorite color is blue, and I'm drinking. This is really boring, but I'm drinking water. <laughs> It's good. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, good to drink water. Hey, Tony, join us tomorrow at three o'clock. Um, I've got Kelly here from uh, Rainbow Gardens, and we're doing a meeting tomorrow on Zoom at three uh, in regards to venues and venues oh. opening. Awesome. So uh, you should have got the email um about it but we'll make you know what oh you can't do it i'll get your i i got your information i'll i'll send you the link yeah no i have it here i have it in the email with this but i hope that it works better it took me a while to get onto this one because it kept popping to the april um zoom meeting and i don't know why but anyway so hopefully i won't have a problem with tomorrow but i'm planning on it so that'll be great good uh, Iris, Rodney just sent me a message. He's like, is there a Zoom meeting tomorrow? I'm like, there's one right now and tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that email today, I think, confused a lot of people. Oh, boy. Yeah. It was, it was confusing. I, I honestly thought she just sent the email but forgot to change the headline that I sent the day before where it's, I said that our meeting was t tomorrow for Got today it. and and that was my first reaction when i saw it and uh, yeah so. yeah yours from yesterday was so clear it said tomorrow and it had the um link and everything so Got it. that was much better and shoshana what's up how are you you couldn't get on tell us why you couldn't get on on facebook the link wasn't working unmute yourself oh she's muted Oh yeah, you're still muted. There There's is. a mute button. Um, she got it. She got okay. it. Yeah, I was trying to like change my back. I was just at a birthday party and I had like this background in there, trying to get it out of there. But oh well. I'll just, I guess <laughs> well, you guys are It fits with the theme of different colors, so <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, fit, yeah. I was trying to just get my normal form. I guess just leave that out then. So um, I. So you couldn't get on. Uh, tell us what challenge you just had. Um, well, I should have just emailed you beforehand. I just when I hit the link, I didn't have like a code to get in, oh, a pass okay. code or something. So, huh. okay, interesting. All right, cool. What are you so drinking? You responded to Rodney. Um, you I responded did, to Rodney. I did respond to Rodney. So okay. I wrote him a quick email just now saying right now. I told them the Zoom meeting's going on right now. And it was really good, Iris, because as I, I got to the meeting five minutes early, since I'm the person that, you know, runs it, and I did a great video in the beginning, because, you know, I hit recording right away. So all the people are just looking at me, and I cut a mean promo for us. So I'm like, <laughs> damn, Vicky knows. Vicky and I have been friends for years. She knows I can cut a mean promo. <laughs> no, you're great with the video. I don't, I don't love video. I, I mean, I do it sometimes and I've have, obviously have done way more webinars in recent months than I ever used to, but I, I miss, you know, being in the same room and interact with people and shake hands and give hugs and all of that stuff. I miss people. <laughs> I miss people. 
I miss certain people, not all people. <laughs> I went out to go visit a client today, stopped in at one of my venues, and it was really cool. It's a restaurant, and there are about 25 people in there eating. Oh, and good. separately, because um, I'm sure it's the same in Vegas as it is in Reno, no more than parties of fives, so, and they were safely you know, spread out. It's a fairly big restaurant, but to see at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when they've only been reopened for you know three or four days, and maybe someone like, give me some hope. Good for them so yeah it was good awesome hi stephanie hi what are you drinking and what's your favorite color are we wearing the same favorite color mine it's hard to see mine's purple purple mine's purple too hold on just a minute let me get my drink <laughs> she's in san francisco <laughs> no i'm in kansas i'm in kansas with my nephew so so it's a non-alcoholic drink but it's going to be really good with the uh, mixers it's called aha and it's blueberry, blueberry pomegranate. I love that one. I had one of those yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> never heard of them. So I've never heard of it before. Yep. No, yeah. my fridge is stocked. I might have half ahas and half bubbly. <laughs> How about Shoshana? Tell us about yourself mm -hmm. and um, what do you do what you and your color and your drink. Um, I should go get a drink. I'm just having I a Diet Coke right now. Um, Happy hour. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I, I should just add some vodka or something in it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, event planner, RB events. And this is normally I was heading towards like, you know, mitzvahs and things like that. But I just moved to Vegas about a little under two years ago and just started my business just about a year ago. So kind of new to the whole business side of it. Before I was just doing it for other people for friends and family when I lived in Illinois. So just kind of when I came here, I was like, oh, what have I been doing for 20 years? And mainly just doing like mitzvahs and uh, galas and stuff like that. So kind of came here and just kind of jumped on the wagon here. So I'm kind of doing two things at once. I'm trying to get to know people Good. because I'm so new here. Where like in Illinois, I knew the different people. I knew the different. Uh, so here is it's a lot of more of getting to know people at the same time, the different vendors. So I both at the same time, I'm kind of getting to know everybody. So I, you know, and then how am I you like through like the JCC and stuff like that, working with Neil and stuff like that. So I've been just kind of working with like different places, just feeding people. Yep. So that's about it. Awesome. Hey, if you want to get rid of that uh, balloon background, if you want to, just go to where your camera is. It says stop video, but there's a little arrow that's pointing up. It says choose virtual background. Click on that and then you could uh, get rid of it. Where it, where it says none, just click none. If you want to. I mean, I love the balloons. You can do whatever you want, but. <laughs> if you want I mean, to. if it doesn't bother, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother you. It's like. Uh, can you send me the details? Sorry, I missed. Rodney wants you to send him the details. Can you want me to send it to him, Iris? Uh, just send him the link, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. Or should I forward him? Let me let me just forward him this email. Yeah. The I one that to... I. Uh... The one that I, the regular one, <laughs> oh, that doesn't have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's okay. Stop. Oops, I can't do that. You want to forward him the link because for some reason it won't allow, I, Zoom won't allow me to uh, make my screen small because I'm recording. Oh. Yeah, here, I'll send it right now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we are just, uh, just five minutes away from uh, Vicky getting started. <laughs> I do want to start us off on time. So um, that's one thing about me is I respect people's time. So, um, and I appreciate each and every one of you for being here and I'm sure people will watch us on the replay. So before we get started, what I'd like to do is I want you to think of one word to describe how you're feeling right now. So I want that one word. So I'm going to start so you're going to have to unmute your mics because everybody's been muted. So think of the one word and I'll start with Iris, go first. One word. How are you feeling now? Uh, I'm starting to get a little um, overwhelmed. Okay. Matt. Matt Campbell. Mm. 
That was a good word because that's where I that's where I'm about. I would say I can't use the same word, so I would say um, you can use the same word. <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, um, uh, yeah. You can use it. Overwhelmed. Sure, overwhelmed. Yep. Oh, okay. I would say that too. Let's go to Shoshana. One word. <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing overwhelmed but didn't want to use the same word <laughs> but now you're going on three feet so um i think uh just being pulled in a lot of different directions like it's not one word but okay no that's overwhelmed. good uh stephanie hold one word well i have to give you two words because i literally have been up with a newborn since 5 30 a.m <laughs> taking care of an 18 month old toddler so right now I'm feeling relaxed, <laughs> but uh, the current situation regarding our the wedding industry, I'm feeling a bit anxious. Okay. And Kelly, what about you? Uh, stressed. Okay. Okay. And Tony, what about you? Anxious. Okay. And Ashley, what about you? How are you feeling? One word to describe how you're feeling right now. Ashley, can you hear me? All right, we'll throw it to Ashley later. Uh, my word would be optimistic. I'm feeling optimistic. Things are gonna slowly get back. So, and then Vicki, you're just about to, you're gonna go up in about four minutes, but give us your word, Vicki. Well, if I could pull it in, uh, into right this very moment, I'm excited. So mm -hmm. not necessarily excited about the bigger picture of what's happening in the industry. I'm probably somewhere between stressed, anxious, optimistic, you know, I mean, it's tough. But right now I'm excited because I am meeting new people and I get to share something with you all that I am passionate about that has made a world of difference in my event business over the last couple of decades. And uh, I'm excited to be here. So that's my word for this moment. Good. Well, we're, we are excited to have you. So uh, once again, we're just about three minutes away. So I know Ashley's on here. I'd love to know who Ashley is. And we... Oh, I hear her now. Yes, Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Now she's I muted. Iris, do you know who Ashley is? Coffee. Everybody's muted. Oh. She's not muted, or I'm not muted, but she still is. <laughs> Iris. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but Ashley's Ashley's with one of the chapels. I I just my memory. I can't retain all the names for the chapel. Okay. Ashley's with the chapel. Uh oh. Not I'm anymore. Not okay. I'm just trying, I just want to know who's in here. You know what I'm saying? I just want to know who, who's coming in these meetings. So, cool. If you guys are willing, I'd love it if you could just, after your name, maybe put what you do. If you're a photographer, a DJ, a planner, a venue, um, just so I get a better feel for who all is in the audience. I know you said it, most of you said it real quickly, but I'm meeting everybody but Jody for the very first time. Uh. Oh, look if you haven't that. done that before, click on the little three dots when you hover over your photo and then go down to where it says rename and then you can type your specific job description title if you're willing after your name. Cool. Blogger, that's one I wasn't expecting. That's awesome. I know from Matt, yeah, but he is. Cool. <laughs> Specifically about weddings. Or do you blog about other things or? Uh, so I own My Wedding Songs. We're a free source of song suggestions. Yeah, you, My Wedding Songs yep. is a sponsor. It was DJ's Live. Yep. Just, but you weren't there in person. No, not right? last yeah. year. Correct. Yeah. But, you, but you were a sponsor because I announced you. Right. I was the MC for that show. <laughs> yep. They, uh, they I know came. it's you. So nice to yeah. meet you. They, nice to meet you too. We, uh, I met the guys at, at Mobile Beat. Yeah, I did come by the booth briefly at Mobile Beat, but that show yeah. is a bit overwhelming. And yes. <laughs> but that's, I think, how you got connected with our show. So, yeah. 
Yeah, we're currently scheduled for August 30th through September 1st for this year in Milwaukee. All right, cool. Oh, good, good. Well then, Vicki, it is uh, 5.30, so why don't we get this party started? If people pop in, they pop in. Cool. All right, well, I'm excited. I will share my screen in just a moment and um, have a PowerPoint presentation, but hopefully you had the option to download this ahead of time. I know not everybody likes to take notes, but some personalities do. So that link was probably emailed to you, and it's for sure in the Facebook event if you wanted it. Um, if not, not a big deal, but different people like to learn different ways. And I know there is the added challenge of staying focused when we are encouraged to have a drink. So my, my drink is, is here next to me, but I haven't started it yet. <laughs> so I'm a bourbon girl. Um, but right now I've been drinking Diet Dr. Pepper and water. And I promise it's just water. And I won't really drink until after we are done. So let me share my screen. And you can laugh at how much stuff is on my desktop. There we go. Of course, it went right back to. I did log out of Facebook so I wouldn't get all of the notifications beeping at us the whole time. So, in me, my presentation tonight, I decided I wanted to share with you from my latest book, Color Me Smart. I'm a personality trainer and I use a four color personality system, which I think is why you guys did the theme colors. So yeah, pretty much my favorite color is anything that sparkles and has bling. So that's why I picked this outfit to wear for you tonight. But this is not an infomercial. I am very committed in, to giving good information with no purchase required. And if you wanna buy the book by the end of it and you want more, great. And if you're willing, I'll have a little offer I will share at the end. Um, if you really want more, but I promise you, I am going to give you five practical, tangible tips that you can use right away. So a little bit of background. Um, when I was growing up, The Wizard of Oz was one of my favorite movies. And just to share my age a little bit, it was definitely, I am of the generation where we had to wait until that one day in the summer when it came on and my mom would call us and the kids would come running home from the, wherever they were playing in the neighborhood because if you did not get home on time, you would miss it and you wouldn't be able to watch it for a whole nother year. But honestly, I really didn't care if I was a little bit late because I didn't like the beginning. Do you remember why? The beginning was in black and white. And that is how Dorothy's world was. It was black and white, kind of boring, and just really not all that exciting. But if you remember, then something happened that shook things up for her. And after that big shakeup, she saw the world differently. She saw everything and everyone in color. And for me, that's what learning about personalities has done for me, for my life, and for my business. I've been able to have my view sh shaken up and I see things differently. And by in color, I mean according to the different personality types. Every conversation that you have in life and in business is some combination of different personalities communicating. So the more you understand your own personality and your own communication style, as well as the style of the person you're trying to communicate with in the conversation, the more effective that conversation is going to be. Probably you will see some analogies in here and have a few aha moments and you'll see me describing someone that you might be in a relationship with, married to, one of your kids, who knows. But for our purposes for the next hour or so, I'm gonna to try to keep it as business focused as possible and specifically in the wedding industry. So if we're talking about personalities, the instinct goes to, okay, well, my clients. And a lot of times we're thinking brides because that often is who we are hearing from the most, not always, but often. But here's the interesting thing about working in the wedding industry. Even if you know what your ideal client, what their personality type might look like, you never have just one client. By definition, we always have at least two. It takes a minimum of two people to have a wedding. And then often, there are a lot more personalities involved in that. You might have parents that are stroking the check, so they decide they wanna get involved in the process and you get to know them. Or maybe you have a really overly helpful maid of honor and you're having to get everything to go through her before you can move the conversation and the planning along. So the number of personalities that all of a sudden become part of the wedding conversation grows exponentially. So at minimum, you're talking to two different people 
but likely you're going to have even more. So my my brain then goes to, okay, well, if we know that people are different and have different personalities and want to kind of see those personalities in color, how do you figure that out? How do you see the whole world in color? And it's not just our clients, because we also know as wedding and event professionals, right, we're not the only event pro at the wedding. No matter what you do, whether you're the photographer or you're the planner or you're the DJ or you're the videographer or you're managing the venue, you're not the only one there. There's always somebody else doing something. So the more we can understand those personalities, the better shot we have at having things run smoothly and building good relationships for everyone that's involved. So one thing you could do is take a personality test and make everybody you meet take it. But honestly, that's not super practical. I mean, if you have a staff, great. This is the test that I use. These are the people that I trained under. I have a certification through them to teach this material. And I've definitely put my own spin on it. Having worked in the wedding industry since 1996, you're going to get very much my version of this and how it applies to our wedding world. But this is a 40 question test that measures 20 of the most common strengths and 20 of the most common weaknesses for all four personality types. It takes 30 to 45 minutes to take it. And yes, if you have a staff, you could ask them to take it. But in most situations in our business, you don't get to walk up to someone, a potential client, even another wedding vendor and be like, hey, I would really like to understand you better. Could you take this 40 question test so I can figure you out? I mean, that's super impractical and just not real life. So we're going to spend the next little while doing before we dive into those five tips I promised you is some basic identifiers for these four personality types. So if you are a note taker, you could, I'm going to give you three things for each of the four types and you can write them down. If you didn't download the form, but you decide you want to try to take some notes, I would recommend just drawing your paper into four boxes. And I'm, everything you'll see is going to be the same order. So whenever I'm talking about yellow, it's always going to be on the top left, green on the bottom left. It'll always follow that same pattern that you see in the slide background. So don't worry. It's not practical to give everybody a test, but there are ways to figure out the personality. So here are some tips on how to identify them. A little one more caveat before I jump in. I cannot talk about all four personalities at once. I am a fairly talented speaker, but I can't do that. I have to start somewhere. So please know these are not in the order of the best personality or the one that you should strive to become if you're not already. I'm simply giving them to you in the order that they are easiest to identify because that's my goal is to help you identify the personality types without a test. So because I have to start somewhere, I'm starting with yellow because they're the most obvious. Your first tip for someone who might be a yellow is that they are loud. You can hear them from across the room. You see them coming. You know when they are there. There is no doubt that a yellow is in the room because they are loud. I'm talking loud in voice and also often in the way they dress. You know, yes, I had multiple bright sparkly sequin things in my closet. I love bright colors. I love big bold jewelry. That is part of, if you haven't figured it out, I am half yellow. I'm loud and I love talking and I like having an audience. Um, for men, a lot of times, maybe they don't have quite as many options in the fashion world to show their yellow personality, but if you see someone that's sporting the bright colors or the really unique ties or even the crazy socks, often that is a yellow personality looking for a way to show their loud uniqueness. So either you hear them or you see them, but if they have that loud vibe, often a sign of a yellow. Another one is kind of related, it's open. Open mouth, open life. So yes, we're loud, but we're also often sharing. Sometimes too much, like TMI was kind of invented for yellows because we tend to have like that no filter, direct brain to mouth blurt thing going on, but we're always getting shushed. We're sharing, you know, too much, too loudly at the wrong time. Um, oops, maybe that wasn't really quite inappropriate for, you know, that, uh, that group, but those are yellows. We're just open. We make friends easily. We talk to people. We share our stories with people that we stand in line from. And now it's like extra weird because they're six feet apart and there's still something in us that wants to like, you know, strike up a conversation with them. And it's just really extra, not socially acceptable right now. So it's really hard for us yellows, but loud and open and then also cluttered. If you have a chance to see their visual space, so depending on if you're meeting someone over Zoom, for example, and you can see how messy their desk is, 
Um, maybe there's a reason why I have a screen here because I don't want you seeing the rest of my office. And I'm glad that you can't see my desk from the way my camera is angled right now. But yeah, cluttered. So cluttered in the way that we keep our stuff and also often in our thoughts. Yellows are really scattered, um, kind of the squirrel all over the place, easily distracted people. So if you see the cluttered, either cluttered in their thought process or cluttered if you can see their, their actual space, Again, often indicative of a yellow personality. Not always, but often. So just given that brief overview, in the chat, throw in some, some comments. Is there someone that you know, either from this, this chamber group that you know, someone from your board, another event pro, someone in your family, in your life, if you have someone, just throw it in the chat. And um, Jody, can you see the chat while I'm talking? But I just want you to just process for a minute. Who I can. Talk? Okay, cool. So, and again, I know we're not a huge group, but you, you know, you can, I want you to just be engaged. This is the part we would do differently if we were meeting in the same room. So trying to adapt for the chat, but hopefully everybody can think of at least one person. Maybe it's you. There are a lot of yellows that get drawn to the wedding industry because we get paid to party. And that's part of who we are and, and what brings us in. So everybody thought of at least one person? Iris said, I'm a yellow. <laughs> okay, <cool. laughs> yep, and she yep, would be yep. right <laughs> and most people have a primary and a secondary so you might see yourself in more than one of these i am half yellow and you'll see my other half color in a few minutes awesome the next one we're going to go to is the opposite of the yellow on the chart and there is a reason why the blue is opposite the yellow can you guess what that might be they're quiet they're the opposite in pretty much everything. So yeah, the first identifier is quiet. Blues are just quieter. They're quieter in how they carry themselves. They speak more quietly. They dress more quietly. They need a quieter work environment. So yellows typically are not bothered by a lot of background noise. Not usually. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the time, the yellows are the ones making the background noise. <laughs> Blues tend to want it quiet. So if you are self-isolating with a blue and you are a yellow, that can be a very interesting dynamic. If you work in an office or on a team where you have this blue-yellow dynamic going on and you often are working in close quarters, you may see this, but blues just, everything about them is just a little bit quieter. And also that, that closed feeling. Not closed in the sense that they don't have feelings. They aren't like closed off completely, but they're a lot pickier about who they share information with. They generally are much more private. They want to know people a lot longer before they start sharing personal details and information. I call it the bubble. Blues have a bubble and they want to vet you before they let you in. Where yellows, I mean, you know, pandemic issues aside, yellows are very much, come on into my bubble, I'm open, come, you know, let's talk, let's be best friends. And blues are like, kind of hold on. And when I didn't know this, in the early days of my business, when I was meeting with a client, I used to leave a meeting really discouraged if they didn't hug me when it was over. Because I'm a hugger, I'm a yellow. I wanted that from everybody that I met. And I would think, oh God, they didn't like me. What did I do wrong? And then later when I learned this, I went, oh, maybe they're just not like me. Maybe we haven't known each other long enough. And even when I did book a blue client, usually by the time their wedding came around, we had gotten to the point where they would hug me. I had to earn my place in their bubble of life though before they would let me in. The other time I see this a lot in weddings, just as a quick aside, as a yellow woman, I would book a lot of yellow brides. And it's true, statistically, most first marriages marry opposite personalities. So often I would find myself with this yellow bride that wants all 10 of her sorority sisters to be in the wedding, and she's marrying an opposite personality, a blue groom. And I'd ask him about who was gonna stand up for him in the wedding, and he's got his three best friends that he's known since kindergarten. But that's how blues are. Once they vet somebody and let them in, they are super loyal. And they're really content just having fewer relationships, but they're usually really deep. And that goes back to why I've chosen the colors that I've chosen. So when you see yellow, I want you to think bright, sunny, loud. And when you see blue, I want you to think deep, like the ocean. They're deep thinkers and they have deep relationships. And then the last one, of course, is neat and organized. That old adage, a place for everything and everything in its place, 
that was invented by blues for yellows because we need that reminder. But blues live like that. Like their desk actually might look like that. Their workspace is designed that everything has a place and they know exactly where it belongs and they function better when things are perfect and organized and right, you know, exactly how they're supposed to be. And their thoughts, their process for information is a lot more logical and you know, it's not like the yellow where we're kind of cluttered and scattered and all over the place, but blues are very methodical. So super, very much the opposite. Does that make sense? Who does that sound like to you? Is that you? Is that somebody that you know? Someone in your family, in your business? Pop that into the chat when you think of someone. Or just nod your head, because I am seeing most of you on the screen. <laughs> you thought of somebody? Thank you. Thank you for smiling. I really do need that feedback. When you see me looking off to the side, it's because I miss having an audience, and I'm looking at you guys on my side of my screen. <laughs> But y'all thought of somebody blue in your life? You know what I'm talking about? And you can see how that blue and yellow dynamic plays off each other? All right. Next is the red. Yes, fiery red personality. You might notice I did say I have, a, I have two that are almost equal. I'm a 50-50 red-yellow split. It just sort of depends on the day of the week, the circumstance that I'm in, the other colors that are around me. But red is the other one. The first identifier for a red is energy. You can feel the energy of a red when they enter a room. There's something about their presence, how they walk, how they talk, how they carry themselves. They just have an energy about them that you can sense. So that's one thing. If you pick up on that intense energy, that's often a red trait. Yeah, and speaking of energy, they're always moving, always busy. So the trend of the fidget spinners, that was invented to keep reds busy because they were always needing to do something. And in order to keep us from distracting people, they thought, oh, well, if we just give them a little fidget spinner, they'll be able to do that. Hand gestures is another one. I think it's all kind of hand in hand. It's not just Italians that talk with their hands or certain, you know, other, um, you know, um, places of the world where that's very common or, it's it's a red trait so those bold hand gestures i'm doing it without even thinking about doing it but often you'll see a lot of uh, finger pointing or um yeah hand gestures and you know this kind of thing things that a lot of people interpret as negative and reds don't always mean it as negative it's just how we end up this doesn't necessarily mean i'm angry or or nor this this is just what I call my default thinking position. Sometimes I just end up with my hands on my hips. And reds can have um, that resting face that people notice. We don't mean it, it's just how we end up thinking. So look for those, those hand gestures. And if you're feeling, if you're not a red and you're sensing this kind of weird energy and negativity almost, maybe it would help you by just saying, oh, maybe they're not angry. Maybe they're just a red personality and that's just their default thinking position. So keep that in mind when you meet people. Practical is our last one for reds. Reds have an inner need for efficiency. They set goals, keep their eye on the target, and they want to get stuff done. They love having things checked off of their list. They measure the success of a day with how much they got accomplished. Sometimes, especially as a red-yellow, not everything gets on my to-do list. I will write it on my to-do list just so I can check it off and feel better about having accomplished something, especially lately in the current challenges that we're facing. All right, who does that sound like to you? Who is the red, fiery, bold personality that you know? Yep, <laughs> and Jody is very much red. And you have a strong yellow, too. You, she and I are a lot alike personality-wise. Yep, definitely. Anybody else, you can pop it in the chat if you think of somebody. And it's okay if you say, oh, this is my mom. Even if we don't know your mom, I think it's still a helpful, you know, exercise for you to go through and think about people in your life that kind of fit this, this mold. All right. Greens, it's our last one. And I always get to the greens last because they're the hardest to identify. And over the years, I've had people say things to me like, why, well, I don't like that you leave the greens to the last. It makes me feel bad. I feel like I'm less valuable. And I can only share this much. My husband and I have four children. I did not get to pick any of the personalities of anybody in my family, except for my husband. I chose him and he's a green. 
like 75%, like way high green. And he's one of my favorite people. That's why I picked him. So greens are awesome. They are harder to identify because you know, you've got those yellows that are extremely loud and open and out there and cluttered and everywhere. And those blues that are extremely quiet and organized and making everything perfect. And reds that are extremely bold and active and high energy. And then greens aren't extremely anything. So your first clue for a green, process of elimination. If none of the other three sound like the person you're looking at or thinking about or you, then maybe you're a green. The other really cool thing about a green is that they're very chameleon-like. So either none of those really sound like you or all of them might sound like you. You could be a chameleon because reds have this amazing, excuse me, greens have this amazing ability to take on the colors of the other personality types for a while. If a certain situation calls for you to act a certain way, maybe you're in charge. Maybe you are the planner and you're a planner who is a quieter, calmer planner, but you need to step up and boss people around or you're a photographer who is super blue and you're detailed and calm and very precise. But every now and then you've got to step up and tell that family, hey, we've really got to keep on track. And you can kind of channel that other energy from the other personality types. That could mean that you've got a strong green side. If you're able to easily bounce back and forth and do whatever a certain situation calls for, but then eventually you're going to calm down and come back to what's comfortable for you. That could mean that you're a green. Speaking of comfortable, comfort is the next identifier for the green personality. Greens like to be comfortable and they're really good at making other people feel comfortable. They're the most likely to be the most casually dressed for whatever a situation calls for. They're also the most likely to be the first ones to sit down when other people are standing or to kick their feet up and just to relax. But they're also really good at noticing when somebody else needs to be comforted. They are great people people and they often gravitate towards the service side of things. They make excellent customer service people. They can be a very effective, calming presence at a wedding on a day when everybody's emotions are all over the place. It's really nice to have a strong green personality that can just kind of help people be comfortable and not rock the boat, not overreact when something doesn't go quite right. So that comfort is a really cool thing. And it ties in with the last one. Oh, I almost forgot I put this light in. The pace for a green, what is comfortable pace for them is not always the same as other people, especially their opposite personality. Remember they're opposite the red and the reds are the really high energy. So if on your team you have a red green dynamic, that can be very interesting. I have a friend who Jody knows, Mitch is a very strong red and he, had a very green office assistant and he was frustrated the whole two years that she was his office manager because she could never get things done at the pace that he wanted. She was dedicated and loyal and she tried, but he was like, no, I need this, 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 and this done by this deadline. And they always had this thing. And finally I said, you need to not hire a green. You know, if, if your highest priority is speed and efficiency, then you, you have a mismatch. And his next office manager he hired is a yellow and she's at much higher energy level and it's working out a lot better. So just keep in mind what's comfortable for a green may not be what's comfortable for a red. Last one, cool, calm, and collected. This is quite possibly my favorite trait about greens and this is why it's such a good thing that my strong red personality is married to a green because he can balance me out. I react to everything up here and he's in my life to help calm me down, to bring me back, to tell me that not everything has to be a big hairy deal. Yes, there are some times where I struggle with that and I'll say things to him like, I'm not overreacting, you're underreacting. I'm reacting enough for both of us. And that's not always helpful. So even as someone who's been training personalities for a long time, I still have to work on this one. But I think this is part of why it's really good that we are not all the same personality type and we have lots of colors on the spectrum in the world because we all need each other. But cool, calm, and collected is one of my favorite traits about my greens in my life, particularly my husband. All right, who does that sound like to you? And yes, I chose green because of peaceful green meadow. That's the 
mnemonic device for you. So who is that? Or any, any planners in your life that you know that automatically bring that calming presence to the people that they're working with or that can calm down the bridezilla or momzilla on the day? We all need some greens in our lives, especially in weddings. That was all introductory to get us speaking the same language before we dive into what it looks like. So I know I'm cramming a lot into a short amount of time, but that's why I'm glad that this is being recorded and you can go back if you need to watch some of it again. But hopefully the colors is an easy way for you to remember, you know, the bright, sunny, loud yellows, the deep thinking blues, the fiery reds, and the calming greens, and what those traits are and how they start to interact with each other. Another fun side note, if you look at the top of the chart, the reds and yellows, those are the extroverted personality types. And then the bottom, the greens and blues, those are the introverts. So just technical definition, that's how we get our energy. So energy coming from other people for the reds and yellows, that's what fills us up and gives us energy is being around people. And blues and greens get their energy from being alone. So this has particularly been interesting to me as a social experiment while we're in this period of self-isolation and sheltering in place. My husband, as I said, is a green. He is very much on the introverted side of things. So when we've been home, we had seven weeks where all six of us were here. I have one daughter who since has, been, has gone home to where she lives in New York. But we had all six of us here. And as an extrovert, I was quote, dying, because I couldn't get my extrovert needs met. I was alone all the time, separated from all of my friends, and I couldn't get my energy. All right, my introverted husband was also having a hard time getting his needs met, but for a different reason. He was never alone. He was self-isolating with five other people. So that has been super helpful for us in this time. So if you are living with someone, hopefully this is helping you. But in general, I want you to keep thinking about it from an energy perspective, where that comes from and how that affects us. And then the other side, if you look, the columns, yellow and green are what we call the people-oriented side, and then red and blue are the task-oriented side. Now, I'm not saying that if you're a red or a blue that you only care about tasks and don't like people, or that if you're a yellow and green, you only care about people and never get your tasks done. But what it means is, if someone were to say to you, what, what was today a good day? And how you process what made a good day, typically blues and reds will say they had a good day and they'll base it on how much they got accomplished, how many things they checked off of their to-do list, what did they get done, that's what makes a good day. Whereas yellows and greens are more likely to have their first instinct be the conversations they had, the people that they got to see or interact with. Did they make somebody smile? Those are the things that we say, oh yeah, this was a good day because I spent time with this person. So those, hopefully that'll help you with some overview. All right, getting into our acronym. SMART is my acronym. Oh, I just realized I didn't change this. I thought I got them all. I did this presentation in Canada and, uh, and in Australia, so that's why color has a U in it. I forgot to, I missed one of the slides. I got most of them for you, sorry about that. Color me SMART, but SMART is my acronym for sales, marketing, abilities, relationships, and teams. Those are five areas where I think understanding personality types can really help us in our business. So as I promised, I'm gonna give you at least one really practical tip for all five of those things. So if you wanna write that down, you've got the whole back of the note sheet where you can think of one thing that you wanna do. And then I also gave you just some blank spots where you could write things that are specific to certain colors. So if you are thinking about a specific client or a specific member of your team, one of your employees, that you have maybe had some conflict with, hopefully something I say will help trigger something that will help you improve that relationship. So we're gonna start with sales, not just because it's convenient because SMART starts with sales, but because in the wedding industry, we're always painfully aware that we are always selling because we're wishing our clients well, right? We don't want to have repeat clients. We hope that once they get married, that that's gonna stick and we're not gonna do their wedding ever again. We wanna get their referrals, but we're always looking for new people because we specialize in one-time events for people, once in a lifetime events. So we're constantly having these sales conversations. And when I first started doing sales training, people would come to my workshops thinking I was going to be able to give them 
this magical formula. Here's what you say in the sales meeting, and this is what's going to work. And I think a lot of people, especially people newer to the business, think that way. And, oh, this is what I need. And I hate to break it to you, but come back to this reality. You've got different people that you're selling to. You've always got at least two of them. And chances are they have different personality types and probably a different secondary personality type. So you really need to be able to be super flexible in how you have that sales conversation and what that conversation looks like. It needs to be tailored to the individual or the couple, their, their individual personalities, whoever you are speaking to at that moment. So if you're looking for that one magical thing that if, oh, I, I just say this or do this at every sales meeting, it doesn't exist. The best thing you can do for your sales is to really try to find out the personality type of the clients that you are meeting with. So we, I can't get in too far into research tonight, but look at what they've given you, whatever information they've shared with you, whether it comes in the form of an online, you know, website inquiry, an email, a text message, um, you know, heaven forbid, a phone call. They've actually, you know, called you on the phone. If they message you maybe on messenger that's super easy because it automatically links to their facebook page but they're looking you up they're googling you pop their name in a google search and see what you can find out do you see anything can you see if you have mutual friends any clues about their personality but look at the words they use and see if you can find out are there any ways that you could describe them what vibe do you get from the conversation that you've had so far? Are they fun and talkative and saying things like, I just want to feel like a princess? Are they looking for something that is super flashy and out there? Those are all clues that you're dealing with a yellow. If they are much more quiet, if their messages are super organized, if they write to you in bullet points, if they're very analytical and super detailed, that could be a clue you're dealing with a blue. Maybe they're just very high energy and right direct to the point, like that efficiency is so high on their list, they just don't want to even deal with any small talk and they're just right, just get to the bottom line. Then you know you've probably got a red. If they seem nice, but maybe they're a little bit um, overwhelmed, like a lot of us are feeling right now, but they're just, in general, having trouble making decisions and don't know what to do, but they're, but they're nice, but they're definitely stressed and they need someone to kind of come and calm them. Or they're saying things like, I just want things to be smooth. I just want to limit the amount of stress I'm dealing with. That's a good sign. They're probably a green. So train yourself to look for words like this, either in how they talk to you. Some of them might say these exact words or how you would characterize the conversation. Does that make sense? Not with me, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so that's my clue. And then once you have an idea of what personality type you might be dealing with, then you know where to guide the conversation. Because you should be able to answer any question about your wedding business that anybody asks you, whether it's about your venue or your photography services, your packages, if somebody asks you about about the equipment or you know what you think about you know this, this certain venue where they're having it, what the load-in is like, or how much time you need to set up, or whatever. Whatever it is that they care about, you should be able to answer that question. So the trick is, how do you get to what they really care about? faster. If you know you're talking with a yellow, yellows value fun and attention. So whatever you can do to create fun and attention for them, letting them know that they will be treated like a princess the entire time. Whether it's by saying we have this really cool dressing room with lots of big mirrors that you can get ready in in our venue, that's a huge selling point to some people. Whether it's I'm going to give you these special lighting, to, you know, so it's really going to show off all of the bling that you have all over your, your decor, whatever it is that can show them that you're going to make them the center of attention. That's what yellows need. If they're a blue and you start talking about that princess effect and the bling and the sparkle and the fun, that's not congruent with what most blues need. Blues need confirmation that you are detailed enough in your planning to pull things off perfectly. They need assurance that you can handle all of the details. If they come to you with a bullet pointed checklist, no matter what personality type you are, you go through their bullet pointed checklist and address their concerns one at a time, and they are going to feel valued and cared for and confident that you can meet their needs. 
if you've got a red and reds value efficiency more than anything, and you try to make them fit your typical sales process and, oh, I have this PowerPoint that all of my clients watch before we get into this and that, that is a huge turnoff. Reds tend to be very direct. They know what they want. If you can answer just the things that they ask, what's going to happen is they're going to feel respected, that you value their time, that you are addressing their concerns on their terms. And then ironically, you'll earn their trust enough that if they really do need something, they could benefit from a bigger package, you will have the chance to add that value and maybe even upsell them. But if you try to do that too soon before you've earned their trust by answering just what they've asked in the time that they've given you, you won't be able to ever really get to that point. So sell them what they're asking for first, and then when they trust you, then you can say, hey, have you thought about this? It might add some really cool value to your event if you considered you know, this add-on or this feature, whatever that is. And then if they're green, remember greens value peace and harmony and calmness. So whatever you can do to own that stress and take it off of them and just give them that quiet assurance that you can make this process simple for them, that's what they need. Maybe you do have 27 different options, but your greens, they're gonna freak out if you start with that. So maybe you just say, you know what? What I've heard from you so far, I think that option A or D might be the best bet for you. Let's just talk about those two for right now and make this easy for you and help me figure out what, you, what you're most interested in. But if you can simplify things, removing some of the excess stuff, that's what's going to really speak to the green personality. So use the, the buzzwords to figure out what personality type they are and then speak to those same exact things. That's gonna be your best strategy in connecting with people individually in sales conversations. All right, any questions about that real quick before we move on to marketing? Otherwise, you're also always welcome to post a question in the chat or I think is there a Q&A maybe? But if you write that in, we can come back to it at the end. But if you have anything burning right now about sales, I'm not seeing any hands. Hopefully, you're probably just all still drinking and I'm glad you're still here. Okay. All right, marketing. If you have a favorite color client that you love to work with, your marketing should speak a little more heavily in that color. Does that make sense? Whatever marketing you're doing, whether it's your social media, your website, any printed materials, business cards, you've got to look to you. And most people don't think about who they're trying to attract and how those personality types see what's on the website. So I developed this, what color is your website color analysis chart? And it's one of the free downloads in my book. And I have a, a URL I'll share with you in just a moment. But you can actually go through your website page by page and ask yourself, okay, what do I have that speaks to these different personality types? Chances are good you wanna have a little bit of something for everybody, because as we've already talked about, you're gonna to have to speak all the languages a little bit because you've got multiple people that are making decisions. But if you really love working with a certain color client, then you wanna have a little bit more of that. So for the yellows, that's so, you know, they, they want fun, they want attention. So they wanna see a packed dance floor. They wanna see blingy decorations. They wanna see really cool, fun lighting in videos. They want action and activity. Do you have all of those things on your website? Blues, they need something different. Remember, they need details and assurance. So they're gonna want testimonials. They're gonna to wanna to know, do you have planning forms available? How much of that can they do online? How many meetings do they have? That click here for more information button, that is what blues need. So yes, you don't wanna have all of the details and hundreds and hundreds of words on your page so it looks boring, but if you've got it available, the people that need that level of detail to make decisions, they're gonna be able to find it. So just make sure that you've got you know, that thought process. I've also seen some photographers who are super blue and love working with blue clients and their photos have like a ton of symmetry and there's really cool lines and they tend to, you know, have everything that's just very perfect for lack of a better word. That's going to attract more blue clients 
than say the photo of the packed dance floor that really speaks yellow. So think about who you love working with or are you trying to make sure you have something for everybody and then you can rotate or make sure you have balance. Reds, remember they value efficiency. Is your website easy to navigate? Is it fairly high energy? Do they want to know that you can get things done and make things happen and you can keep with the schedule and that you're going to be able to deliver on your promises? Reds really need that. Or greens, do you need something that's going to make them feel comfortable? Do you have maybe a few more photos that's just the bride and groom by themselves in a secluded area without the whole big, huge party scene to remind them that, yeah, they are going to have some time for some intimate moments. Do you have words on there like, you know, a stress-free day? or calm and smooth, whatever it is, make sure your words, your photos, your imagery that you're using matches the different personality types. So if you want that tool, there you go, take a screenshot of that and you can go to that website right there and print that out. And if you wanna do that, the same form will work for every page of your website as well as your social media. So depending on how your website is set up, if you make your own changes or if it takes someone to do it for you, Sometimes it takes longer to make changes on a website because they're just harder to do. But you could do this on social media right now. You could look at your social media and go, wow, I'm super high energy person and my last 17 posts are all really high energy and they're all about fun and yes, that's important. But what about the fiance who needs more details? What can I say? What could I do? that would maybe show them a little glimpse into a planning meeting or something that's gonna make sure they know maybe it's I'm posting a couple of reviews that have just said things like, you made my day perfect. Perfect is a buzzword for the blues. So think about how you can repurpose people's words and speak to all of those different personality types. Here's an example. Because marketing with other people's words is such an easy, way to do it. You've all got reviews like this. So if you've got a review on your website or wedding wire or whatever, um, or in a survey, however you get the information from people, you can feature them. So put it in a prominent place on your website, make it into a little graphic and share it on your Instagram, whatever it is that you can do to repurpose it. But if you get one like this, look at your lighting. It makes me look like a princess. I love it. What color is that one speaking to? And I clicked it on super yellow right so if you want to attract more yellows put that on your website especially if you're not a yellow personality but you're good at serving yellows maybe you personally are naturally drawn to those perfectly organized photos and the you know even symmetrical lines and you go wow i'm not as exciting oh but i got a review like this i can use that and that'll speak to those potential yellow clients or one like this. Many people commented on how great our DJ was. We were also impressed at how well Alan balanced his involvement. He was not overbearing or had a lack of presence. He was worth every penny. This one is what I consider a very blue. They're trying to quantify things. It's balanced. They were impressed. It was basically perfect. That's what blues need. They wanted the approval of others. And people commented on how great it was. And he wasn't overbearing and he did have a lack of presence. And then that he was worth it. They're quantifying it. Those are all things that speak blue. So add that if you need some blue. Promises were right on. Everyone was on the dance floor and everyone told us how great you were. We knew that you were great, but it was awesome to me to hear how much everyone else loved you too. That is a very red testimonial. Prince, okay, this is a blessing and a curse of being a red. Reds are usually right. They're usually very quick to size up a situation and know what needs to happen and make it happen. And not everybody loves that reds are right and we shouldn't go around announcing it all the time that we are, but this is what cracks me up about this interview. We knew that you were a great DJ, but it was awesome to hear that everybody else acknowledged that we were right in our assessment. There's just this validation and the whole, just your promises are right on. There's something very um, high energy and efficient about this. Like we were right, we nailed this. And that's going to speak to other red clients down the road. And then, of course, this is like the classic green example. Thank you so much for making a reception so wonderful. The flow of the night was so smooth and professional. It made things very easy for us to enjoy. How many of those buzzwords right off of that green slide are in this interview? So if you want to give green clients peace of mind, if you've got reviews that use those words, that's going to work to attract more green clients. So you get to pick who you want to market to and use those words to your advantage. If people are giving you testimonials, 
think about, you know, looking at them for those buzzwords and figuring out how you can best utilize those in all of your marketing, whether it's print, online, social media, website, whatever. So again, there's that URL one more time if you want that and color analysis guide, just take a screenshot of that and uh, you can access that at any time. All right, moving on to abilities. This one, your, your assignment is fairly simple in practice. It's exactly what this photo shows. But the hard part is, it's not always easy with us to be honest with ourselves. We love thinking about our strengths, especially certain personality types, yellows and reds, who we're very aware of all the things that we're very good at. And we know that we've got experience and that we're good at giving direction and that we can control a party and that we can foresee events that need to happen and we have these certain strengths. But are you honest about your weaknesses? And I think this is important to look not just at the event side and how you run a wedding, but overall in business. One trend I've noticed, and I've worked with event pros from all over the world for the last 10 years, most of us got into weddings and events because we were good at a specific thing. We were good at entertaining people. We we're good at cooking. We're good at taking photos or playing music or understanding how to organize a party. Most of us don't have a business background. And then if you think back to what I told you already about the colors, I am a red yellow, right? All high energy, all wanting to get stuff done, but super wanting to have fun in the process. My husband is almost all green and his secondary is yellow. So that's where we bond is our, our love of fun. But he's the super cool, calm and collected. So that detailed personality that's naturally good at things like bookkeeping, record keeping, paying taxes on time. Neither he or I are naturally good at those things. So we can understand that about ourselves and know, yeah, we both suck at this. Okay, but I'm not telling you this to give you an excuse. To, I can't just go to the IRS and say, yeah, I know I didn't get around to paying my taxes, but it's because I'm out of blue. So now you understand and that should be fine. No, now that we understand this about ourselves, you have two choices. You can learn how to do it or you can hire someone. Figure it out or hire it out. That's really your only two choices. But we can't just not do something, but being super honest at what we're good at and where our challenges are, that's really important in personal growth and in business growth. As a red, I can say this, one of our strengths as a red is that we're, we have natural leadership skills, right? We hear that a lot. But not everybody loves being told what to do all the time. And whether it's in an association like this, and I'm not saying Jody's like this at all, just because you admitted to being red and I know you're involved with the board, but sometimes reds can just be labeled as bossy. And that's a real turnoff to people. If that's you, I know there's times when I've had to take a big step back where I have to bite my tongue and I have to really think carefully before I say things because my, my yellow red combination wants me to just blurt out, what the hell are you thinking? And that is not always an effective way to communicate with our peers or our employees, especially not our clients. So be honest with what you need to work on and then make a plan. Whether it's a character trait like that, like being bossy and needing to focus on a healthy leadership instead of being bossy, or it's a skill-based thing, like my example of not being good at record keeping. I mean, can you imagine if I told my employees, I know I said I was gonna pay you every two weeks, but you know, I'm a yellow and I just didn't get around to it this week, so I'll pay you next time. If I did that on a regular basis, I would not have employees. So this is one of the things that I hire out. I have, you know, an accountant who helps me with things um, because I can't afford to not pay my employees. Well, ironically, that's, an unusual example because I haven't been able to pay employees for eight weeks, but that's another story. But you see what I mean? So this is a simple exercise, super old school, but be honest about your strengths and your weaknesses. And then if you have a team of people, are the job descriptions lining up with the strengths and weaknesses? We'll come back to that in a second. Um, Jody, how am I doing on time? I don't know what time we started, what time it's supposed to end. Do I have 10 more minutes? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. okay perfect. Relationships. This is true for all relationships, but especially I want you to think about the client relationship right now, because how often do we book a client a year or more before their event, right? And depending on what your role is, 
that will determine how often you communicate with them over the course of that year or more sometimes. So what if you go three to six months without having a conversation? What if you're doing high volume and you've got a lot of clients and you've taken this time in the sales process, right? To figure out what color personality type they are and then you don't see them for three months and then you've got a planning meeting. If you kind of forget the details, you have to start over. But what if you had their file color coded, either a physical file with most of you probably don't have right now, but if you do, you can use the old school highlighter to label what color personality they are. Or if you're doing it online, you can put a little note in there, color code it somehow. But what if when you went to confirm their upcoming planning meeting in the file, it said this bride is yellow. What could that do for you before the planning meeting? Well, for starters, you could have the self-talk to say, oh, I should maybe not schedule something right back to back with this because I know yellows love to share. They need to tell their stories. So I better allow a little extra time. It also can remind you if you're not naturally um, interested in all of the details, and I see this a lot with guys who are really trying hard to bond with their clients, know that yellows love to tell their stories. And it might be awkward for you to say, so tell me about your dress fitting, but think of something that you can ask that still is authentic, but give them a chance to tell their stories. It could be as simple as, you know, what did you do this weekend? Have you guys been able to have any fun? Especially if you're planning over Zoom like this and in your areas it hasn't been open. Or maybe if you're like me and things are just starting to open, have you guys got a chance to go out yet? Let yellows tell their stories. If you are a yellow, and your client is not, this is also really important. If you've got a red, they don't want the small talk. They just wanna get in and get out of there. So you might need to remind yourself, oh yeah, I really need to stay focused for this one. Or just little word changes. If you know that you've got a green client, make sure you're asking a few times throughout the meeting, how are you feeling about all of this? Is there anything else that's still stressing you out? What could I take off your plate to make it easier? That's a good question for any client, but especially for a green, that's gonna to speak to their heart. So remind yourself throughout the process, if they call you or text you on a regular basis, put a little note in, their, in the phone. You know, mine used to just say like, you know, Jenny Bride. What if it said Jenny Green Bride? And maybe the date. So if she sends me a text, I don't even have to look up her file. It's just got all that information in, her, in, in the contact form. And I go, oh yeah, okay, she, I remember Jenny, she's a green. How much easier will it be for you to have successful conversations with them if you're constantly trying to train yourself to think about the other person's personality and what they really need? And then lastly, teams. We hit on this a little bit with the strengths and weaknesses. Once you're honest with your strengths and weaknesses, if you are looking to hire your first person or you're maybe evaluating a bigger team, Finding out what you're not naturally good at and being real about that and then hiring someone who that is their strength should not be something that is threatening. That should be something that is empowering to be able to say, you know what, I'm really not good at this and this person is super strong in this area. They're going to be a good balance for me. Personal example, I admit I'm red. I have a bit of a temper. There are some times when we have a difficult client where I send in my husband because he is the cool, calm, and collected green. And I can say, you know what, honey, either I can calm down a little bit and maybe I could handle this tomorrow, but if he needs an answer right now, I think you're better equipped to deal with this. And my husband can step in and smooth things over, whereas if I were to go in there and fly off the handle, I might make it worse. So think about your team. Do you need to hire someone? And if so, what personality is gonna be a good balance for you? Or if you currently have a team, maybe this is an activity that you want to do together. If you, there are discussion questions in the book. Again, I promise I'm not trying to oversell, but if this is something that you think you wanna dive into with your team, that is one of the most affordable ways to do it. Contact me directly and I will give you bulk pricing on the books. It's way cheaper than if you got it on Amazon and you could read through a chapter, or even something you could do if you're just doing training over Zoom and it has discussion questions in there. But maybe you just need to look at, is each person in the right seat? You know, if everybody's in the right seat at the right bus, do they have the right skills? What if you've got someone, you know, like my friend who was running the office and she was very nice and she was friendly and she was a great like front desk person when they had an office and people would come in. 
but she was not naturally detailed and she had trouble following through with tasks and it was not a good fit for her to be in charge of creating the timelines, for example, for the wedding receptions. They needed somebody with more, more details. So think about the specific traits that that individual task requires and who is the right personality color for that. This isn't a huge group, so I can probably get by with saying this. I can't have everybody ask me this every time you go to hire somebody. But I have some friends in my inner circle when they are getting resumes in, when they're looking for a position, they'll send me resumes of who they think the top candidates are. And I'll look at the resume and do a quick personality analysis. And I can tell you, oh, this person is a green and this candidate is a red. So you think about which color is gonna be the best fit for that job. And I can tell you from what I see on the resume with 90% accuracy, what personality type you're looking at based on what they've given you, assuming they're being honest on their resume. So I hope that that helps give you some things. I know I'm kind of brushing over the teams because everybody's in a little bit different place, whether or not you have an employee. Even if you don't have employees though, think about a team, could be other people on this call, other people, other event professionals that you are getting to know, and maybe intentionally befriending people who are opposite personalities from you because you can learn from them. If their natural skills are opposite of yours, that's a great friendship to invest in because you will automatically learn things that don't come naturally to you. And maybe they could learn something from you also. So a team doesn't necessarily have to be someone that is an employee. It could be, it could be your accountant or your bookkeeper that you hire. It could be an accountability partner or just someone else from this chamber that you get together with on Zoom or eventually, you know, over coffee um, or as things start to open back up and say, you know, hey, I've been thinking about this, you're struggling with this, what do you think? And, uh, and hopefully you can get some, uh, some good insight from seeking out another personality type. So I know that was pretty quick, but I hope that I fulfilled my end of the deal and gave you something practical for each one of those. Um, people love personality quizzes, so I will let you know I have one on my website. It's not the full version of that Wired That Way one because I don't own the copyright for that one, but it's a mini quiz, but it can be kind of fun. So if you wanna do this, um, with your spouse or your partner or some of your employees, feel free to send them to the website and do it. Just know it's not, um, it's not perfect because sometimes we answer things um, the way we think we're supposed to because we kind of want to get a certain result. So they're only as accurate as the information you put in and they're not foolproof, especially when it's 10 or 12 questions instead of 40, um, but it is kind of fun. And so that is there for you as a free resource. I also have lots of articles that I've written over the years. I don't blog super regularly, but there are a lot of them there. So if you wanna look up certain topics, um, you're more than welcome to check that out. I have an online course that I've developed. It's actually a master class that has seven modules, each one made up of five shorter videos. And there's downloadable handouts similar to this, specific to marketing and sales for your wedding business. So it's like a very deep dive into the marketing and the sales components of the Color Me Smart. If you wanna get a little bit more, like a try before you buy, you're welcome to log on to vickymushney.com, go to the wedding classes site, and you can access the first two videos for free. If you want something maybe a little bit more in depth than tonight or a little bit more than a $20 book, but you're not ready to like fly me down to Vegas and have me do a training with your whole staff, the online course might be a good in-between for you. And because I recognize that we are all struggling right now, my master class is normally $4.97. I set up a special code for you guys. Um, and for anybody watching this on the replay, it's $147 um, instead of $4.97. So you just have to enter LV Weddings and you'll be able to access that discount. So take a screenshot of this. Um, if that's something that you think you um, might want to do, that code is valid for the next three months. If you have questions or you want to know more, like I said, you can absolutely download the first two videos for free. And then if you want more, you want to be able to do this with your team. This is kind of a nice um, in-between, more than the book, but not quite the same. Um, but as soon as it's really safe to travel and get together with teams, I do love, love, love doing that and would love to come to an event with you guys in person, whether it's a, a networking event or well, I have longer workshops, half day and full day workshops. So if there is anything else I can do. Uh, meanwhile, if you have a Facebook group and you want to add me at least temporarily, I'm happy to continue the conversations. My contact information, I think Jody put in the Facebook invite. You're welcome to reach out. I, and trying to do better with Instagram. Um, 
I definitely spend more time on Facebook, but you can reach out to me. I'm the only Vicki Musni on either platform. So if you spell my name the way I do, you will find it. It's absolutely, it is me. Um, it's the one perk of having a weird name. But I really <laughs> hope that some of the things that I shared with you tonight will stick with you and help you as you prepare for the different conversations that you have because relationships hinge upon conversations and the more we can focus on understanding the other person the better those conversations can be and the deeper those relationships can form and ultimately the better that is for business we can earn more referrals we can serve our clients better and we can definitely earn more dollars when we are serving them in a way that makes everybody happy so be like dorothy I hope this shook you up enough that you can start to see the people around you in full color in every aspect of your business with each other as event pros, with your employees if you have them, and of course with your clients and the guests at their events. See everyone in color and remember that those color personalities are only magnified by the emotions on wedding day. So it's equally, or it's equally true all the time, but even more important on high emotion days. So I really hope that this helps and I'm happy yeah. to be a resource too in any way that I can. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Vicki. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. You're good. Oh, good. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Vicki. Yay. Sure. Everybody give her a nice round of applause. Put those hands up so she can say them. Um, big love. Woo. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> I'm going to stop my screen share and then I want to take a picture of all of you guys so I can post about you on my Facebook page. May I do that? Yeah, I'm right, fine with the camera. Just count it off for us. Yeah, I'm hearing I didn't share. Thanks, you guys. Uh, anybody have any questions for Vicky, real quick? Oh, hey, look. See the Pat's chat got, now? Pat's got her cat. The cat is giving you a. Uh, oh, cute. <laughs> Kitty. Um, any questions, anybody, uh, for Vicky? You nailed it. But what if you're, you are a multiple, like, you know, because at first I'm like, I'm the green, I'm a blue, I'm a, you know, yellow. And then I'm like, well, I have red. You know, what if you like, you relate to all of them in parts and then other parts not? Because I'm cluttered, but when I have to be, I can be organized, but I'm all over the place, you know? Yeah, so probably you're very high in the green, which mm -hmm. is kind of nice because greens do have an edge where it's a little bit more natural for them to be that chameleon and kind of blend to what they need to be. But really, my point is that no matter what your personality type is, mm -hmm. we need to be focused on figuring out somebody else's personality, right? Yeah. And so once yeah. we know that, then we can go, oh, yeah, okay, if they're this color, they're going to need this. So you remember nothing else. I want you to picture those four colors and go, okay, yellow, they're bright and sunny. Yeah, they like being the center of attention. They like having the spotlight on them. Like, I mean, everything has to shine. So, okay, what can I do to make them feel special? Blues deep like the ocean. What can I do to answer their deep questions and their deep feelings and assure them at a deeper level that I've got this and their event's going to go off without a hitch. Reds need efficiency. They just need, you know, to know that you're going to handle things. It's very hard for them to trust somebody else because they are so used to being in control. So reds, you have to prove yourself and you have to just meet them where they are. They're the, just the facts people. So answer their questions as efficiently, but yet as succinctly as possible. And then greens need that piece. So if you're dealing with the green, just assure them it's going to be okay. I've got this. So like I, I've got the plan, so you don't have. So you don't. So have I was the green. thinking opposite because one of my things is what you hit the nail on the head. I'm sorry if I don't like taking okay. hit the nail on the head was um, that you what I've been doing. Um, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at like figuring out people's personalities and all that. But like with my business being so new, I know that I need somebody to come in and help where I'm short. So where I've been overwhelmed trying to figure out where do I bring in and what's going to be, you know what I'm saying? Cause I feel like, Oh, I need this person who's a lot more organized, but I, I need, you know, so I'm trying to figure out does somebody work best with green. And I know this is, this kind of oh, simplifying yeah. things, but also you can, but that's besides doing the strengths and weaknesses, you uh -huh. can also do like a love hate of all the things that I have to, that have to be done in my business. What do I love and what do I hate? And mm -hmm. chances are the things you hate are probably in line fairly much with the things you're not naturally good at. That's okay. you want to start delegating if at all possible. Okay. And that's, a, that's a, okay. That's what I was trying to do. I'm like sitting there like, oh, because cause what you said about the business part, somebody like what you're good at, you know what you're good at, but being a new business, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't like any of that. 
yeah. the business side of things. Yeah. And there's some things we have to suck it up and learn. I yeah. spent a good portion of my last family get together in January with my sister-in-law who owns multiple businesses in Sacramento and is a consultant for some large companies and an accountant by trade saying, Hey, I, I really, there's certain things in my QuickBooks that I need to be able to figure out as a business owner. I need to just yeah. own up to it. Even though I don't love this part, I need to learn it because ultimately the buck stops with me. And I have 13 employees that I'm responsible for until eight weeks ago, I was doing 21 events every single week. And I, I got to have my own stuff together, you know? And yeah, it tax time and whatever. I want to make sure things are handled properly. I've got the people but you just got to find that balance. Some things you just have to learn. And I think, you know what, I'm not naturally good at this, but I'm smart. I'll mm -hmm. figure it out. I need some training. I need someone who is calm. She's a very much a green and, um, it, which is awesome because she doesn't get upset easily when she has to re-explain something to me three times or when I call her later and go, I can't even remember how to log into my QuickBooks right now. Mm -hmm. Can you show me that again? And she's very patient. So you know, oh, that's, yeah. and that's what it is, is I think we, we hit the overwhelmed. Uh, I've been trying to learn all the stuff and there's so much to learn. Oh yeah. You know, all the zooms and this and this, and my biggest weakness was all the computer, AV, you know, and all that stuff. So that's where like, and normally I'm a very calm kind of laid back <laughs> person, but I think uh, that's been like the biggest thing is trying to learn everything. Well, um, and that's true to, if you are truly agreeing, yeah. which is I'm getting that vibe very strongly from you. Yeah, you're not comfortable because you're being forced to do things in a way that's not comfortable. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing it. That bottom line is what you just said. You just got to do what you got to do. Do that's what I'm doing. But that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm on this. What you said that. I'm like, okay, I got to just get in. No, we're glad you're here. Glad you, you're welcome anytime. Anytime. Uh, anything else before we say goodnight, everybody? Anything else for Vicki? Okay. Well, once again, Vicki, thank you so much. Everything was great. Well, we'll have, uh, again, we'll link all her information. Uh, recording of this video will be made available as well to our members. Um, want to remind everybody that uh, there was a memo sent out uh, earlier today in regards to a, a three o'clock that we're doing tomorrow. It's uh, more venue specific. So uh, Kelly from Rainbow Gardens um, is here and um, kind of got the ball rolling on this. So tomorrow we're looking at getting all the venues together uh, in a Zoom meeting and talk about how, uh, how, thing, how things are gonna open and safety and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So did I miss anything, Kelly? That was pretty much it, right? Is it for mainly venues tomorrow? That's it. Um, yeah, it's for venues, but you know, Kelly, event planners are welcome to come as well, correct? Everybody, yeah, yeah, anybody that's in the industry, it's all uh, you know, to try to get the word out and let's get everybody opened up safely and because I'm interested, uh, like, get the wedding industry going, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody involved in the, in the events that are happening at the venues, right? Maybe could give some feedback or what was that again? Say it again. You know, uh, the vendors that are involved in these events that are at the venues, I think it would be valuable to listen in for them and also for them to give feedback to the venues. Absolutely. You know, Especially uh, DJs and photography um, are, you know, any, any ideas that we can get uh, to help keep people safe and uh, it would be much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I hope this isn't a dumb question. Are most of the issues you're dealing with, are they the same in the, is it a state mandate or is it varying from county to county? Because even though I live in Reno, I might want to crash that meeting tomorrow. Because <laughs> I care about what it's looking like as my, my venue clients are reopening. Absolutely, we'd love to have you crash. But Kelly, yeah, it's, it's, it's everybody. It's, it's the state, state. <laughs> it's the state. We're in Nevada. Yeah. Nevada. It's really the whole state and you know, there's there's been, there hasn't been a whole lot of clarity on, you know, anything as far as, you know, what you should do, when should you reopen? There's, uh, you know, they have a thing with, you know, uh, public groups with 10 or less people, but we're not really a public place. We're a private place. Then you have the restaurants with 50% occupancy, which we kind of do apply with that. Then you have, uh, you know, wedding chapels, which are already open, which we are one of those. So it's a little bit of everything and we're not falling into one specific yeah. thing. So to just to get united with everybody and to get everybody open safely is the main goal. 
Yep. yep. So the wedding chamber is sponsoring this event tomorrow at three o'clock. And the invite went out. So it, w it went out with your invite, Vicki. So yeah, yeah. They, somebody did a double email. So well, if anybody shows up tomorrow thinking they're going to talk personalities, you'll have the video link to send yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> right in. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, one more time, let's give it up for Vicki, everybody. She did a wonderful Thank you, job. Thank you, Vicki. Um, <laughs> Vicki is happy. She's in Reno. She's happy to come down anytime. She has an open invitation to come to any meeting. She I have wants a ton to come of to. West points too from the last four trips I've canceled in the last eight weeks. So yeah, I can come down soon. It's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'd love to see you. Thank you, everybody. Um, Iris, anything else before we say goodnight? Is there anything else I'm forgetting? Uh, not that I, I can think of. Um, I'll make a Facebook event too for this tomorrow's event and send some links out so it'll be easier to find <laughs> okay and then i'll send you the recording once it's all downloaded and all that kind of stuff i'll send it to you and uh jason so you'll have the recording link okay all right everybody well hopefully i will see you tomorrow again thank you vicky for everything have a oh. safe evening everybody and um we'll see you tomorrow thank you guys so much. thanks